All right, all right. Hello, hello. I'm Johnny Jungle Guts, the Top Notch Gamer, aka the Top Notch Gamer, <laughs> and this is Let's Gay, giving you Final Fantasy VI today. And today on the show we have gallery runner, gallerist curator Chelsea Mohammedy Sabet. Hi. She runs Lame and Space here in Chinatown. Thanks so much for being on the show, Chelsea. Aw, thank you for inviting me. And it's very funny because I live right around the corner from Chelsea's gallery, so I've seen many, many of their shows and enjoyed many and many of their snacks. Yes, so yes. I'm glad to have you on the show today. I you you are the person who comes in and then makes me feel like okay good, like one person came in. We're we're fine. Because you gallery sit on days where maybe not a lot of people come in. Yeah. <laughs> Cuz the gallery just so everyone knows, the gallery is in a location where uh like it's not on a on a driving street really. It's sort of just on a walking street in Chinatown. There's these little streets that people that you know you can navigate and go to bars and restaurants and stuff but they aren't next to the road so it's hard to get uh like foot traffic from people just driving by i think they're kind of marginalized streets yeah and you're and yours on you're on like a really weird one too yeah because you're sort of situated right in between like this really touristy section of chinatown and the gas station yeah uh, the gas station, which I know like the back of my hand. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So what made you want to, uh, open up a space? Well, I, um, had, basically, the, the space is, like, family-owned, so it was kind of like, why not? Right. And, um, at first it was like, oh, this will be my studio space, and then I was like, no, like, I want to do like shows and I want to like um reach out to the artists that like I've been like collecting you know just artists that I love mm -hmm. that I've been watching forever and I'm lucky enough to have a lot of them um ha like a lot of them have shown so that's yeah. like been really excited for me personally just on a selfish level sure and tell me a little bit about the show that's up right now um the show that's up right now is called Poppies it's it's called Momos, um, and <laughs> it's by uh, it's by Isa Beniston, and she's at Gentle Thrills online. And um, I found her one day. I'm like very very like heavily um, on Instagram. I love Instagram. It just like it's perfect for me. It, they really got that shit down. Um, actually, like I'm gonna retract that. It used to be perfect for me, and I don't like all the changes. But whatever. Um, so I one day was on Instagram and I was like, I'm really uninspired and bored. I want something new. And I just like went down a rabbit's hole and found her profile and was like, wow. Um, and I reached out to her and then she had a studio visit and it was great. And um, so her art is so cool. It's called Puppies. Um, a lot of the pictures are puppies, but they're not all puppies. Um, she basically like goes to a lot of flea markets and um collects these little objects and then she does a bunch of portraits of them and like enlivens them in her mind like they become sure. personal for her and so that's like what the show is and for all my uh fellow gamers out there if you're a big fan of annabelle Cro uh, annabelle animal crossing specifically the character isabel that was a tongue twister you would definitely like this show. Uh, it definitely has some Animal Crossing vibes. So Does it? Check it out. Yes. I don't know what Animal Crossing is. Animal Crossing is a video game in which the simplest way I could explain it is to say that you're a mayor of a town full of animals. And there's a little puppy, a little Momo, oh. named Isabel uh, is one of the characters. And her head kind of looks, she's super cute, and her head kind of looks like a bell. Mm -hmm. I think, which is why her name is Isabel. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Isabel? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, she she looks a lot like some of the puppies in this art show. Uh, I'm sure completely coincidentally. Okay, wait. So this webisode, is this, is it us or is it that? Is oh, it our that. voices? It's okay. our voices and that. This is so weird. So you're like a gamer artist. Yes, I'm trying to bridge the gap between games Chill. and art and also... Maybe develop uh, the gaming 
uh, present a gaming community that I want to be a part of. Create uh-huh, that, uh-huh, create uh-huh. that community. Do you feel like that's happening? Well, I think doing this show has helped me expand my the you know just make meet new people and learn yeah. a lot about different types of people that I maybe didn't know that well or knew just very peripher- peripherally. And uh, yeah. That's yeah. cool. That's great. See, I love that. Everyone's like, oh no, technology is like, we're all plugged in and we're disconnected. But no, no, no. We're super connected. Yes, we're very connected. And sharing. It's very complicated. So I was on the website for Layman Space and uh-huh. I like that you wrote Layman Space. I can't remember the exact sentence. But it was, <laughs> Layman Space mostly shows. Women artists, unless there's a male artist that I like, <laughs> but you can tell how rare that is or something. I forget exactly what you said. Yeah, yeah, funny. yeah, 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 yeah. That's the policy. I don't know. Um, <laughs> do you want me to ex- expound? Sure, uh, sure. So, um, basically, I... Oh, well, that's the thing. When you, like, open a space or start a business, everyone, like, is suddenly an expert on business, and they're like, so what's your what's your edge like what's your angle and I'm like I don't fucking know dude like right now I'm really showing art that I think deserves to be shown mm-hmm. and then it just kind of emerged that it was all women sure that wasn't like the plan it's just that I like I'm just like more fascinated by women than men yes um but like the, no but like I'm not like I'm not like black and white that doesn't no mean, you you know you, you've definitely shown men you showed uh, Alex Zagade's dad I think yeah 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 oh yeah 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 well that was um they like they like rented this space so that wasn't oh, like okay. that wasn't layman space but like it was it was still like um I don't know God when I got that that was so cool did you see the oh artwork? yeah oh my God yeah the drawings were great. And uh, everyone here also should check out uh, uh, Alex uh, Sagade's work. He is also a person bridging fandoms and art. He wrote about comics and cosplay for Art Forum, I believe. Uh, And also his uh, Instagram is great. Wait, what is his Instagram? I don't have it. I think it's Geek God. What? The Geek God? Geek God? And he posts, uh, he posts, uh, panels from comic books. Oh my goodness. And it's a very wonderful, it's a very wonderful Instagram. I met him really briefly, um, when we were setting up. I mean, like, not briefly, but, like, we didn't really get to know each other because he was, like, really focused on Oh, yeah. But he seemed really nice. And he taught at USC, but I never got to... I never got to have him as a professor. Yes, he also uh, he also is part of an art collective called My Barbarian, which is worth checking out. Uh, and uh, his, but the artwork that they showed at your space was by his dad, who was uh, never shown his art before yes. and was in his eighties. Yes. So basically, he developed. My understanding is that he developed an art practice later in life, um, and. He um, got a stroke, and so he couldn't, you know, communicate verbally. So, like, he started drawing as a different mode of communication. Mm -hmm. And then was just like, oh, hold on. Like, I'm producing some really cool things. And, like, kept going. And then they were like, we really want to have a show of this work. Mm -hmm. Um, And you've had uh, a lot of different events besides just a regular gallery show. You've had some events at your space, too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one of my faves, I don't know, were you, did you ever go to this one? It was, um, I think one of my fave events was probably, um, with my professor from USC who taught me critical theory and all those fun words, Mm -hmm. and, um, Mm -hmm. she, uh, her name is Maura Brewer, and, um, she is, like, the smartest person I've ever met in my life. And she did, she does this thing called RDS, which is Rational Dress Society. And um, basically they've developed um, a post, um, quasi-utopian post-gender garment um, so that you can reject choice and never have to choose, you know, never have to choose what to wear again. Great. Um, And all you wear is this one jumpsuit. So they they make jumpsuits. And so I don't know if you remember, but they like put in the windows um it said reject choice um 
That I remember. Yeah, that's that was their event, and it was just like I love them because they're so witty, but also like it's like so well spoken. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, that was that was my favorite event. And then they had this I don't remember his name. They had they had some dude who was like a like one of their like I think performance artists like uh like what's the word I'm looking for? Like a dude they looked up to like from the old days. Oh wow. Who came and modeled the jumpsuit for Great. them on like a rotating platform. She really cool. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Um and then you also, I think you had a pre-party for the K-pop convention? Wait, did I? I'm pretty sure that's who those women were. It, it was like this group of women and maybe a couple gay guys. Kind of the most um, glamorous and diverse looking group of people I'd ever seen in my life. Wait. But they also... <laughs> uh, they also had this sort of singular, very singular quality. And I came up to them. This was definitely in your gallery. Uh and I said... What are, you, what are you guys doing? And they were like, oh, we're having a pre-party for the K-pop convention this weekend. Uh -huh. And they were listening to K-pop and they knew, like, choreography and stuff. <laughs> was this recently? Yeah, pretty recent. Okay, I rented the space out to them. That oh, was okay. different. That was different. All right. <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad that it was cool. <laughs> it was really cool. It was, uh, it was amazing, actually. The yeah. choreography was, whoo. I couldn't I believe it. I didn't know that they were, like, doing that. Well, that's awesome. It was sort of like a Backstreet Boys type choreography, I, I would say. But obviously because they have all those Korean boy bands now. Yeah. I, I had just gotten back from Japan, so I was, like, really jet-lagged and not going knowing what was going on. But, um... <laughs> there you go. When the space is not um, inhabited by art, I rent it oh, to okay. private parties. All right. So that was what was happening. Yes. Um... And, uh, what were you doing in Japan? I was visiting my boyfriend. Ooh, he lives over there? No, he, um, he's doing, he has conferences to do, and then he is working in Kyoto University. Um, he's a mathematician, and, uh, he recently graduated with his, um, PhD, so, like, now, like, I guess summer is just, like, a heavy time for academics, you know, like, that's the time when they can go and do all their talks and stuff. Yeah. So he was in Japan, um, working with a professor that he really admired, which was so cool. I was like so proud of him. And then, and then he's going to. He was, was he there for like three months, and then he's going to Mexico, and then he's going to um, China, and then finally he's coming back. But basically, he was like, um, "This university or this program gave me a lot of money, and I have an apartment. You should come here because this is an opportunity to come to Japan and not have to like worry about hotel or anything." Yes, that's so, always good. I was like, yeah. Can you read me uh, this box in paragraph right now? We're about to fight a boss. Okay, okay. Game. Okay, boss, Haydn, neither Haydn or the Hedonites are too powerful. It's Good just to know. that their poison attacks get obnoxious sometimes. All right. I had Strago and Reln in the party because I was forced to use them. I had Mog in the party because he can equip the Moogle charm, but he didn't have much else. Lastly, I had Sabin. For me, the entire battle was triangle, 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 bum rush, triangle, 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 bum <laughs> rush, triangle, okay. cure two, triangle, bum rush. You get the idea. And the fight was really easy. Extremely easy. The point I'm trying to make is bum rush kicks ass. <laughs> On one more note, the boss casts Grand Train eventually. Strago's best lore spell. Okay. All right. There we go. So it won't be too hard. So I don't worry about it. Good, good. So that's really cool. How did you guys meet, you and your guy? Tinder. Tinder, that's where I met my my uh, fellow as oh, well. Oh, God, I love Tinder. Tinder is such a uh, such a breath of fresh air for the gays, too, because all the other ones we've got are just in, just completely... Uh, oh, are they just, just like... Just devoid of innocence, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So is it like... So do you feel like Tinder, like, as a, as a gay dude, is, like, more geared towards relationships? I think it's more geared towards... Dating. dating. I think it's more geared That's towards going out on a nice date with someone. Yeah. And talking and all this type of thing. So that's why I, I like it. But obviously in my case, in your case, it was geared more towards relationships. But that's oh, yeah. But that's really cool that you're dating a guy who's not necessarily in art. Um, well, I've never, never dated an artist. <laughs> that, is that a policy? Yeah, that's a policy, actually. 
Yeah. That's not a, a coincidence. Policy. It's not a bad policy. Um to tell the truth. Yeah, I I guess it's like um like I I don't know, it's 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 like a judgment that I've made that I'm just um, I just don't trust artist men, straight men. Okay. I don't know, but that, but that's black and white thinking, and that's that's not rational. So. Well, uh, <laughs> it's also. I'm sorry, I just stepped on Chelsea's oh, foot there. Uh, <laughs> it's also. Uh, I think. Uh, I think. I feel like I get a little competitive sometimes. Yeah, I wonder about that with, too. If you're both uh, in the creative field, and, yeah, uh, and that was, and um, yeah. I also, like, I'll have to admit that, like, maybe the the draw for me with Henry was, um, almost, like, fetish-ish. Not, it, not fetish, like, not mm. gross, but, like, God, like, it, like, an academic man, like, a mathematician, like, holy shit. Like, that, that was just so hot to me, like, yeah. from the get-go. So, um... So that was that was an attractor, but um, oh yeah, well, smart guys are that's that's oh that's god, one of the hottest things. I it's the hottest thing. Like I've like I can have like chemistry with a guy, and then if he like uses a word wrong or like fucking misspells something <laughs> that is not a typo, like that's the end. Like wow. it's it's shitty. It's it's no better than being like like picky about looks. But it is what it is. That's interesting to hear you say that, that it's no better than uh, uh, picky of being picky about looks. I never thought about it that way. I think it's the same thing. It's it's their intelligence, you know? Like, it's what they... It's and, a judging. <laughs> and you went to USC for a grad or undergrad? Undergrad. Um, not, not really certain about grad school yet. I'm playing... I'm, like, thinking about, like... At first, I was thinking very pragmatic and, like, maybe I could, um, be a therapist because I, like, love that shit, but, um, and I love talking to people, um, but, uh... Well, I don't think you need it. Oh, you don't think you need grad school? I don't think you need oh. grad school. well, thank you. Because you already are so active in, in art, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, and, and present, you know what I mean? Thank you. That's, that's, I mean, like, that's awesome to hear. Um, well, okay. And I never went, either. Oh, yeah. I will, I just think that, like, if you're gonna go to grad school, you better be fucking, like, in love with what you're doing. Otherwise, I don't know how you get through it. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, so, I mean, like, re my recent thing is that I've dropped the idea of being a therapist and now I want to go to school for classics but I'm pretty sure that that's a phase that's going to wear off and maybe I'm oh off. yeah um classics what is that like Greek literature or something like dude it's like everything it's like philology ling like it's like so you get linguistics you get philosophy you get um literature you get poetry you get like history you get archaeology what's philology I don't even know what that is philology is like the study of the origin of words oh okay so yeah like it's i think it's like I'm, I'm having trouble distinguishing it from etymology i think my what i've like understood is that etymology is like the history of like where does this word come from maybe like the word the form of the word on paper like written out but then philology is more like um more like linguistics where you're thinking about like the movement of the tongue and like how that relates mm -hmm. um but uh yeah um so i just feel like i've always like when i think about grad school i'm always like oh but i love this but i love this but i love that and then with classics it's like something that seems like maybe i um like i feel like like very complete with it yeah um it sounds like a lot of you get a lot of different stuff yeah so, you went to USC. Where did you grow up? I, I grew up in Northridge. I grew up in LA. Wow. In, in, in the valley. Wow. And what did mom and dad do? Um, my dad and my mom are immigrants, and then they started um, a company together. Um, so, they own a business, and they... <laughs> so, you've probably, like, had to deal with them with your parking before. Like, oh. They, they have a parking, valley parking company. Valet parking. Yes, oh, yes. Oh, interesting. So, um... Now, is that where you get your sort of drive from, maybe? 
Um, because to be an immigrant and then start a business seems like a lot, like a lot. You know? Dude, like it's like something like, like my parents, you know, they have an like my mom's very like administration side, and my dad is really like he's like risk taker. Okay. Um, and that's just been a part of my life forever. And then doing my own thing has opened my eyes and just like I have so much admiration for my parents because they they didn't have like backers or anything they didn't have parents to be like here's a space um they did it on their own sure and like i do think that my dad is a really talented businessman and i think yes. my mom has really good vision and where did they immigrate from my dad came from iran when he was 16 years old and no, I think 14. He came here to go to high school and then the revolution happened and then he couldn't right. go back. Um, and so he made a life here. And then my mom came from Nicaragua and um, she was 16 and they came here because there was an earthquake and a war and that place was really, really like destroyed. So they had to, they had no choice. And um, so, uh, so she lived like, you know, like she like lived in East LA and um had to work had to lie about her age um, to get work yeah and to to get through college because she in nicaragua like she had graduated early high school um yes and two years early so like they so she had to lie about her age here in order to go to university uh -huh. um but um then yeah so everyone, and she did it she did the whole thing got the degree oh, yeah she yeah she ah. pulled it off <laughs> which is weird to think about because my mom is such a rule follower um yeah but sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do yeah yeah sometimes you have no choice um so yeah they met it they met at school they met at uh lacc all right and what do they think about uh, all the stuff you do they are the people who like kind of made me do it um i'm not saying that i wouldn't choose it but they like my so my dad studied engineering so he has like he's very crafty like he he's a sure. builder and so that side of him relates to art but my mom studied design and uh, she studied interior design in college and she um so she's just like obsessed with art like Oh, okay. <laughs> like obsessed like she goes to so many gallery openings and everything all the time and um Actually, it's kind of funny. She just discovered what a hipster is. Sure. <laughs> it's elusive for older people. Yeah, they don't get it. We went to Echo Park the other day because I wanted to go to Stories to pick up this book. And um, and so she went there and she's like, I don't understand. Like, what what is this? Like, because like, she, she remembers Echo Park as, I guess she hadn't been there for a while. Um, yeah. But like in a long time and she's like i don't get this place like it's still sure. retained like the murals but then like there are like a lot of white people here <laughs> and i was like and a lot of young people and i was like yeah 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 and then she bought a book called little hipsters in the stories oh i know that i know i don't know that as a book but i know that as a um it's like sort of almost like the Muppets or something. Or, no, it's like illustrated. Yeah, but uh, they also, I think, did puppetry, that project. Oh, okay. Like little short skits, like with Muppet, with like almost like Muppet was type it, characters. Do you, you know, was the person who did that like a Cal Arts professor? That I don't know. Named Jamie? No. Okay. Maybe it's two whole different projects. But when, in the mid 2000s, the early late 2000s, maybe it was, there was an internet project called, wow, I can't remember what it was called, but it it was it was sort of like this, it was like the first thing I'd seen like this because it was like clothing and comedy shorts and music all rolled into one and like on the street type reporting too, mm -hmm. and it was super like indie urban this indie urban vibe but also like really nerdy like they would go to the comic book convention and interview uh -huh. just like the weirdest people and it, a lot of it was actually really funny but it was definitely shamelessly hipster and then they had the little hipsters uh, -huh. uh puppets wasn't one of their things but anyway i liked it because it was it was like it was like yeah like they're they're making fun but it wasn't negative it was cute yeah let me see if i can find what who it was that I'm thinking of. Maybe it was two different things. 
Let me see. So anyway, so then what is your, so then your mom gets it now? Would you say she so gets like, it? So like, she kind of gets it. So she, so she was like, she, basically I walked in the, I walked into the, um, the, the kitchen the other day cause I live at home. Um, and I, and she was like there and, and she was like, you know what? I love Echo Park. She likes it. She loves it. And I was like, wait, so you're, you are a hipster that you're a hipster. And she's like, I, I know she, and then she's like, I like the hipsters, but but you know what? I kind of want to attack them. Oh, I love your mom already. <laughs> and she was, like, so perplexed by, like, her, like, fascination, but also, like, like, a, like just hate, like, animosity towards Well, them. that's what we've been living in, like, our whole lives. Yeah. Now she yeah. gets it. She totally gets it, and I was, like, dying at her. Okay. So here <laughs> it is. The thing I was thinking of was called Lil Hipsters. Okay. That was put out by Kid America Club. Uh, which actually has some really funny videos of them interviewing people at uh, comic book conventions. The thing you were talking about is called L Little Hipsters, and it's by Michael White. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and it is a book. Little. And it's a collection of paintings. Uh, so yes, two different projects. Uh, possibly... Possibly both, similar. Both uh, looking, worth looking into for a laugh. Awesome. So that's so funny though about your mom because <laughs> what, she, what she described is I think what we all experience yeah. you now because we all want to be interested in art and yeah. in different kinds of music and fashion and and progressive ideas and progressive ways of thinking and eating or whatever. Yeah. But um but then we're also sort of like repulsed by the culture because it <sighs> Well, it's kind of like this thing where, like, if someone claim, like, if someone's like wearing a shirt of like something that, like, maybe someone's going around wearing a Sylvia Plath shirt. That's very basic, but whatever. Um, <laughs> they, like, see, see how I'm covering my bases. I'm like, I don't want to look like I think Sylvia Plath is the ultimate, but she is. I she love is, her. So she's great. Um, so um, I'm gonna do another plug. Please read her journals if you haven't. God, they're so good. Yes, read them before uh, Kiki and uh, Elle Fanning do the movie because I know that's on the that's on the. Uh, What's that? Uh, Kirsten Dunst and Elle Fanning, I think, are doing Sylvia Plath movie. What? <laughs> what is it? It's just about her life and death. Something. Wow. I thought it had already happened. When people were complaining about it recently, I thought it had actually already happened. Wow. I, I had heard about this in the works years ago and thought it had already occurred, but apparently that's, now it's Oh, happening. God. That's, I mean, that's a good idea. Like, business-wise, that, that was a good... They're I mean, they're both money. blonde. They're all bl It's just a trio of blondes there. I wonder what the other girl is going to be, because, like, I know... Oh, no, I think... Like, maybe it's, the, it's one of the Fannings. Okay. Oh. Kiki is not in the movie. Kiki is producing, oh, directing. Oh, you're something. talking about Kirst Kirsten, Kirsten Dunst, yeah. Okay, okay. And then the fanning person is, I think, playing Sylvia Plath. Shit. I think that's. Oh, I think God. that's. I think that's the uh, the current. I've always had this dream of just reading her whole book, like like you know, acting it out, like doing like a web book or what do you call it, ebook? Yes. Um, but I I don't have the rights to that, you know. Um, but, uh, but, uh, no, her, her, her journals are so good because she talks, this is one entry where she talks about the joy of picking your nose and fucking describes it. And it's mm -hmm. so crazy. Um, Sounds what was good. I saying before that? Oh yeah. Hipsters. We were talking, we were talking about hipsters and like the, the weird thing where like someone expresses an interest in something you like and then, or maybe we don't have to speak in the first person. Maybe two hipsters are talking and then one. I mean, you can call me a hipster. I, I'll, I'll, uh. I don't know. See, like it's, it's a problematic word. Yes. Um, yeah. It's also like, like one time when I was dating this dude in like Silicon Valley, oh, um, boy. and he w fit every stereotype about that sure um his friends all called me a hipster sure in 2011 so that was like a weird new word but also like i mean still offensive i guess and so um i remember being weirded out by that and then he didn't defend me and then i had to like Ooh. yeah no like fuck that guy <laughs> um but uh <laughs> i dumped him after he stole the company to apple um but uh, that's like my baller thing I say. Um, it's pretty baller. Yeah, no. Ugh. As I charge my iPhone next to you. 
Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> I know. I know. It was before I realized how. Actually, insane. yeah. Let's get a let's get a charge going here. Oh yeah. I'm about to go train some Pokemon in a couple hours, so. Gonna Wait. Be fully you mean charged. like on your thingy? On, on this? my thingy. So anyway, so you so you so 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 you get called a hipster. Yeah, for wearing a hat. For wearing what? Because kind I of wore hat? a hat. It was I don't know. It was black. It was um. It wasn't. I guess it wasn't a fedora, but it was one of those like girly hats that are black that are pretty big. Yeah. Oh yeah, like a big black, hat. like a big, like almost like a urban oh, the urban well, sombrero. Yes, yes, yes. The, you see girls like oh yeah, it's very classy. very popular. Yeah. So I wore that, and then they were like, "She's a hipster," and I was like, "I don't even like." Like, 2011. Okay. That was just when the urban sombrero was coming in too. Yeah. So you were you were like really. So I trend. must have really ahead, been one, you know. But I was like, but I was like, you know what? Fuck you guys. Like, are you calling me artistic? And like, I have elusive uh, tastes and or or I try to be or you're saying that I think I'm better than you, which is just a nod towards my confidence. I don't know. Sure. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I mean. I feel very, if someone calls me a hit, like one time I was coming out of the liquor store and there was these two girls sitting in their car. Is it the liquor store? No, it's, it was in Highland Park. Oh. And uh, these two girls are sitting in their car, kind of smelled like weed. They were really giggly. <laughs> and they looked at me and they said, are you a hipster? <laughs> what? And, and I was just like, you got me. <laughs> because like. You know, I'm a. I was at the time a white guy living in Highland Park. I'm now a white You're guy now living Mexican. in Chinatown, and now uh, through that osmosis, I'm now Mexican. But before, <laughs> uh, I was white, and um, and so you know, I could, if I had wanted to, I could have moved back to Riverton, New Jersey. Yeah. Gone to the country club. Yeah. Eaten some steak, but I didn't want to do that, and but I could have, you know. Yeah. So. Uh, and I, and so if those two, uh, those two gals wanted to call me a hipster, I, I just, That's just funny thing. and fun to me. Yeah. You know? And I, I guess I do like to distinguish myself. I really do. I like to stand out. Yeah. I, I love attention. I'll be very open about that. Oh, I mean, who, I mean, I yeah, love it. Yeah, yeah, Why would you not, I mean, Jesus, Harlow's monkeys, like, will die if we don't get attention. Mm-hmm. That's true. That should, is that, what is it? Food, water, shelter, and space? They should add, like... Attention. Attention or love to that. Love. Yeah. No, I really, yeah. Uh, uh, let me look up Maslow's hierarchy of needs. But, uh, so, yeah, so it's very, it's all very, uh... It's very complicated, too. Yeah. I think um, another th thing that seems to be a key hipster um, feature is uh, is pretending that you don't like things. Yes. Negating. And trying to only like things that no one else likes. Uh, and, and that sort of lack of... Um, um, clarity you mm -hmm. know it's which is that i don't like that i'm very opposed to yeah i don't like that either because it's um it's like like it turns into well i've been thinking about this for a while and it's not very um articulate yet but like i've been thinking about this idea of identity capital so like this relates to what we're talking about how like people um treat parts of their identity like capital but there's this like thing that happens that doesn't happen in like money systems where like if i have something it negates your having it like if i said the thing about um like if i'm gonna talk about some poet um you can negate that and then destroy my my capital there by talking about it too yeah by talking about it and being like yes and i also read about this but actually blah 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 so uh so, are you talking about when too many people like one thing, it's not cool to like it anymore? Or are you talking about someone just proving someone else wrong? Um, maybe, maybe the first, or maybe the, the first thing is, like, the eventual trickle-down, and the second thing, the latter that you said, was, is, like, the, that's, like, local, local level, like, person <clears throat> to person. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Uh... 
I mean, I, uh, I, uh, go through it all the time just because now comic books and, or comic book movies, and now Pokemon after this summer, Oh, God. Have become the two biggest, the two most popular things in America yeah. in a lot of ways, whereas in my youth, you know, uh, they were not. Yeah. So now I'm, so now I'm kind of a basic bitch. Yeah. But, uh. Basic. See, basic. Basic means you don't have any identity capital. You're poor. That's, yeah, you're poor in identity cap, cultural capital. Wow. Yes. No, but I want to make a distinction between cultural capital and identity capital. Oh, okay. Tell me the I, difference. Well, so cultural capital, I think, it's similar, but this one is more, no, no, no. It how, let me, okay, this is what I, what I meant. I need to think about all the things and thank you for bringing up that one because that's tricky. Um, identity capital, I think, is different because I'm talking about, like, individual people and um, the way it goes, the way that this is, like, embodied in social media. So, like, the more identity capital you are, you have, like, and that could also be, like, people you know. Um, and, like, the way you dress and the way you choose to depict yourself and, like, mm -hmm. oh, I'm gonna read this book. I'm gonna, I'm gonna Instagram me reading these poems by HD. Um, but it's like that's the adding to your identity capital um like I, like i'm very like interested in the way it happens on instagram because like my friend um has like super a lot of followers and she was saying that there's like some she was telling me the ratio of her amount of like average amount of likes and the amount of money a company would be willing to give her for the for a post yes right and so that's where i was like that's where like this thought of identity capital turns into real capital and is like becomes like materialized but or concrete but um but what how is it different from maybe it's not maybe the stuff of it is cultural capital but then it, it's just like acting on the individual sure does that make sense mm -hmm. i don't know okay but no that's a good one i have to think about that well i i think my philosophy on it at this point is to not because I think when we like things because other people don't like them, that is actually once again feeding into a consumer model. Yes, yes. Because a lot of the, the way things are branded is, oh, if you like this thing, that makes you unique. Yes. Because you bought into right. or paid for this item. And I think that that, that, I, that idea uh, in commerce uh or in shopping or whatever extends out into this intellectual sphere because we're living in this capitalist society so i i that's why i try to stay shameless and watch game yeah. of thrones you know and no, it's... say i like the thing that everyone likes because i do like it and yeah and it's like also there's just like an amazing joy when like like me and my cousin like go nuts and listen to hannah montana music that's Which fandom. that fucking yeah. happened. Oh yeah. Oh fandom. Are you kidding me? I'm obsessed with Karen Carpenter. Yeah. I draw so many pictures of her. Yes. So I feel you. So now let's talk about your art. Cause you, okay. did you graduate with an art degree? So yeah, I did, but I graduated with a BA, not a B, uh, not a, sorry, not a BFA. Um, because I had a weird trajectory in college where I, um, w like randomly like had convinced myself that I had to do physics and physics then, yes so i always tell people about that even though i never got the degree because i think that it's important information but um but and then it, it gives you more insight into why i think that mathematics is so godly you love math wow that's so i cool. love dude math is fucking trippy and like i found out that like most of my professors in college because henry my boyfriend um, where he, he went to USC, um, he gave me the inside scoop on who, who was like a total stoner. And I'm like, oh, duh, math stoner. That makes so much sense. It does. It makes no sense to me. So much sense. There, these people are thinking about the surfaces of things and thinking about how like coffee cups convert into donuts and like a coffee cup and a donut are actually the same. <laughs> I mean, that sounds like something a stoner would say. Right? So, but how does that, you mean, like, engineering type stuff? Um, well, what do you mean by that? I don't well, know. like, if we're talking, I don't know, it's, I don't know what, 
I just don't know what you mean by how a coffee cup and a donut are okay, the same. I so guess what I don't know. Th- visualize a coffee cup and you visualize the handle connecting to the cup part. Right. So like there's one hole in this. Mm-hmm. And we could just like condense this coffee cup into like like part of the donut part. Like it could collapse down into the donut and then make something with a hole. Essentially they're the same form. And I don't know what that's called. And I'm also, I know I'm butchering it. But, um... I, I'm sorry to get what you're saying, though. Yeah. yeah. And so what was your... Uh, so eventually you did get an R. What kind of work, uh... What kind of work do you do? So... I... I... I, I do a lot of, um... I think, like, illustration-y, painting, whatever the fuck I feel, I don't feel like I have a very defined style mm-hmm. or mode of art making. Sure. Um, it changes all the time and it's very fragmented and is often very interestingly um, influenced by the art that I'm showing. Sure. Because you're sitting in there all day yes. looking at it. Yes. And like like I said, these are artists that I really admire. So sure. it's like so inspiring to be surrounded by their art. Right, of course. Um, but it's... Um, yeah, my art, I don't know. It changes all the time. Right now I do, I'm doing a lot of painting. And right now I'm like in love with like... Um, what's it called uh modern stuff like um you know picasso and um modigliani oh wow so i'm good we're gonna skip over the tower of fanatics fanat fanatics i sounded like a canadian (laughs) minnesota person and we're gonna go straight to the ancient castle which will continue on the next page if you could read me just a first couple sentences of that that would be great to get to the ancient castle, you must first visit Figaro, Figaro Castle. Talk to the guy who moves the castle, and on the way to Figaro's, something happens while underground. Oh, boy. Choose to investigate the matter. Head down the stairs to reach the jail cells and exit through the secret tunnel. Open the two chests in this area to get Wing Edge and Ether. All right. So those are both in, um... Like, the tunnel. Like, in air quotes. Um take the lower right door and open the chest to find a monster in a box all right done let's hold there for a second because i'm realizing i need a few more uh i think i need some more healing items some potions that will Mm -hmm. heal my guys if they get sick or hurt uh yes i hear that a lot um that's funny that you say that it influences your uh your your artwork yeah, like it makes me it makes me focus on something that I hadn't like thought about before, like whether it's like the way that like Nira's work was um so sharp, like sh- her lines were so clean and then it made me be like, you know, I need to have more integrity with my the way I deal with my acrylic sure. paint cuz it's too like jagged. Uh-huh. Um or um, or Anya made me really think about colors. Uh-huh. So that was great. And what was that show? Anya's show was called Second Skin. And um, it was the one where she painted it all pink. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. So she did all those. She's a she's an oil painter. And um, very bright colors. And very beautiful. And, like, very, like, tropical feeling. And the puppy show that's up now, the floor is in black and white tile. Mm-hmm. Also, to me, uh, harkens back to uh, a little bit of uh, animal, I almost said animal collective, animal crossing vibe or just general video <laughs> game vibe. But why did, uh, why did they decide to go with uh, that on the floor? What, what? So Isa does that every, like every space she inhabits. So like her, all her studio spaces have this, she gets this really like hardy paper Mm -hmm. um, and she paints it in checkers. That's just like what she does. And um, so, um, so, so I told her to inhabit the space. That's what I like them to do. And so that's just like the go-to. And for her. Mm Mm-hmm. And you also had a show about uh, butterflies or featuring oh, yeah. live butterflies. You want to talk a little bit about that? That was so... That was awesome. Okay. So that was a girl I knew um, at USC. And she is... Um, her name is Arielle McLeese. And she is not online. <laughs> 
and um, she is she is not online. She's I like that not announcement. Online. It's important to know about her. See, that's she does some not good, use the internet. That's like identity capital right there. She has that against all of us. She does. She really does. Um, but. She is super interested. She's similar to me where she's like super interested in science and can't get it off her mind. And um, she, so she's always thinking about experiments and investigations and exploration. And so she loves insects. And she um, got all these butterfly habitats and hung them from the window or yep. from the from the ceiling. And I, I fed them. Those kind of look, just so everyone knows... Describe a little bit about what a butterfly habitat looks like. So it's like, go back to fourth grade and think about like this like cylinder that's made out of netting and then you put your, um, what's it, not cucumbers, um, <laughs> what are they called? Caterpillars. Um, you put your caterpillars in there and they turn into, they, they have the chrysalides and mm -hmm. <laughs> that's a new word and then um and then they hatch and turn into butterflies and you let them go or you keep them in there for a while but um the focus for Ariel was um when they hatch from the from when a butterfly hatches from the chrysalis it um expels this red um fluid that mm -hmm. looks like blood and when you're female it reminds you of period blood oh yeah um but any blood really um and especially because it's like the act of like like this like like um incubation period and then it like comes out as a butterfly it's like kind of like puberty and coming out as a woman or whatever the mm -hmm. fuck and uh so so ariel was like had this memory of childhood of like making this beautiful box for her butterflies and then it being like destroyed by these blood splatters and being like holy shit are they in pain <laughs> and um and so then she wanted to go back to that and so she made all the butterfly she like uh she did all this research about the the butterflies and the thing was called the imaginal disc and an imaginal disc is like it's like a disc that includes like all this information from which protrudes like for example a leg in yeah. the inside the chrysalis while mm -hmm. it's um developing and so so she would take the like bloody netting and like make something of it sure so that was that was a cool show yeah it was really cool and uh that one did that have some really good snacks if i remember correctly probably um, probably because ariel has one of those moms who is a very loving mom and like takes care of everything so like, oh yeah she i i can imagine that she would have brought cool snacks yeah i just remember at a lot of the things you've done there's been a lot of good snacks oh i'm so glad that's like that's, i have to that's a feature that's definitely. a really good association yeah food food is so like my dog there was a time when i was worried he was going through maybe a little depression oh no and then i started giving him treats in exchange for doing tricks on his walk <gasps> <gasps> and it has just, I think, just turned his whole experience of his day oh. around because he just likes, we just all like to eat tasty things. Yeah, yeah. And he's a dog and he's not that complicated. And yeah. So now he's a much happier little guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, we all take pictures of our food because it's like one of the best parts of our day. Oh, it's great. It's great. It's great. So, uh, you were actually getting, the funny thing about this interview is you are being interviewed immediately before me <laughs> yeah. who was interview who was interviewing you this chick named alora which okay. is a beautiful name that's a beautiful name um it might be a fairy and sleep beauty yeah it was yeah 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 so uh so she reached out to me through instagram and was like i want to interview you um and so yeah but we mostly talked about um mental health <laughs> Sure, it was, that's important it was, to talk it was about. cool, yeah, I love talking about mental health. Because you wanted to be a therapist for a little yes, while. Yes, I did. I mean, I still do. Like, when I get over this, like, Greek thing, I'll go back to wanting to be a therapist. Sure. And, but was it for a blog or a website or anything? I think it's for a zine. I'm not quite sure. I didn't really ask or investigate. I just love to talk about myself, oh. so I don't mind. I know exactly what you are talking about. <laughs> and one of the things I overheard as I was looking at the art show while you were being interviewed is that you had a boyfriend who dragged you to a screening of Lord of the Rings. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> I like that uh, anecdote because you said, I used to have this boyfriend, and then Alora just immediately went, 
Ugh. Like, she just knew. <laughs> She's like, that's all you have to say. Girl code. <laughs> and uh, that was a really beautiful moment. Uh, so he drags you to Lord of the Rings, and what happens? I fell asleep. You fell asleep, but then he gets mad at you. He got really mad at me because he would get mad at me for everything. And what what was his reasoning on why he would be mad at you for falling asleep um, during the movie? Because, um, because he thought that, like, my disinterest was insulting. That, like, his friend oh, had put, like, this whole screening together. Oh, it was, like, a special thing it was, somehow? Well, sort of. I don't know. The dude lived in this, like, his his dude lived in this, like, sky rise in San Francisco. I mean, this insane space with Weird. his parents. And then they had access to a private screening room, so they put together, like, an like not an event, just a get-together. In, and the, then, in the sky rise? Yeah. And, and, yeah. Oh, sorry. Go on. What did the theater look like? It was little. It was like a little room. Like oh, okay. A, like a little conference room-ish. I don't... What is a sky... What do you mean by sky rise? I don't know what the exact definition like, of that would be. Like, really tall building on Market Street. Okay. I gotcha. Um... And, uh... Yeah, no, it, it was fleek. Like, God, oh, Like, a... I, I have to admit, it was cool. Um, the, the, the dude that I'm talking about who lived there, his dad was friends with, um, the, the physicist um richard Feynman, who is like the rock star of physics i love that you know that and are 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 knowledgeable in that field <laughs> thank you i think you would like richard Feynman because he was just kind of like a funny dude well he he made some very interesting um uh you want to call him discoveries i don't know but um he he did some interesting things in physics and also was known for like being a master at picking locks yeah. And because he's just a smart guy. And then um, he played bongo drums. So now what made you fall asleep during Lord of the Rings? Because I low-key love trashing J.R.R. Tolkien because, but at the same time, I, I secretly have a affinity for that. It's like me and Lana Del Rey. Yeah. Um, so I um, fell asleep because there were no, well... I guess maybe unless I fell asleep. <laughs> I wasn't conscious the whole time. So, like, don't shoot But before me. you were conscious. Before I was conscious, there were no interesting females. There's if, no women. Oh, yeah. There's two. I think the movies add women to, yeah. to Lord of the Rings uh, way more than they were even in the book. And that's yeah. still very, very little. Incredibly small amount. Yeah, and that's... Yeah. <laughs> I got bored. Because, like, there's no one for me to fixate on. There's sure. There's no me to look at. Yeah. I can't relate to anything, so I fell asleep. Uh, I hear ya. I, I think my affinity for Lord of the Rings is that I see a lot of... I like to think of Sam, the two main hobbits as being, like, gay for each other. But uh -huh. besides uh -huh. that, I'm, I'm definitely a little over it. Uh, and it's beautiful. I mean, I think the shot, a lot of the shots and everything beautiful. But. Yeah, I, I don't, see, I don't know. I but I, but I, the reason I like to trash J.R.R. Tolkien is for those same reasons. Because yeah. Because there's no women, and, uh, and they're all just, uh, damsels in distress, and then, of course, yeah. it's that typical, uh, fantasy thing where, like, Aragorn, the character Aragorn is this hero, kind of because he's the sole, uh, heir to this uh, monarchy or whatever, so that gets into, like, you know, imperialism and everything. Yeah. And that's all bad, and, uh, and so, so, yeah. God, I'm so jealous of people who are into these kind of nerdy things. Like, I have this professor who's super into Minecraft, and it was the same one, the, the critical theory yeah. professor. Mm -hmm. And she had so many fucking cool things to say about it, and I was like, damn it. If only, like, I could stay awake through these things. I feel like I could, like, <laughs> see, make interesting See what these other nerds see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to see that sometimes. Uh, that's so funny. What did... What was her perspective on Minecraft, if you could remember? Well, anything? it was back in 2010, so maybe that, like, maybe what she was saying back then, like, now it's kind of, like, something that we think about a lot, but um, she was talking about how, like, Minecraft was appealing to our need to go back to something more basic because it's nostalgic, like, the very blocky. Oh, yeah. And also how we're kind of sublimating our need to, like, be autonomous and, like, create things, like, dig for the materials, the raw materials, yes. and, like make things on our own because like we don't know where materials come from like, we have no idea when i buy a bag of potato chips at the store i have no idea how that bag was made. yeah how it got there no idea 
It's wild. It's um, wild, the world we live in. So, how long have you lived in Chinatown? Like, a little over a year. Oh, nice. Uh, actually, maybe coming, yeah, like a year and a half. Year and a half, I would say. Um, have you ever, like, delved into the history? Of Chinatown? Mm-hmm. Uh... No, I guess I need to do that it's more. It's really interesting. Tell me about it. Tell okay, me all okay, about okay, it. okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, um, so I'm gonna start off saying that ever since I went to Kyoto, I'm like in this like tourism state of mind. So then I went, sure. like I said, I went to Stories and I bought this book on. Um, this dog is so amazing. Um, I bought this book on LA on all the historical landmarks in LA and I wanted yeah. to cover Northridge. And then I was like, well, whoa, 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 I need to cover Chinatown because I'm there all the time. And so, um, basically Chinatown started out not here. This is a new Chinatown. Yes. That, that I did know. Yes. So it was, there was another Chinatown called old Chinatown and basically it got destroyed and eventually demolished because of the 101 freeway and, um, like it, it just was unkempt and, um, a lot of people had moved away, but like there were a lot of families, old families who had established it, who were very interested in like retaining the history. So they purchased this area and built it up. And, um, that was in 1938 that this, that the place we're in right now got, sure. um, like opened. And, um, then there was this other place called China city. That was, like, down the street of LA, like, down that way. I don't know what that is. Yes. Or something. Who knows? So, uh, that was made entirely of movie sets, but that's not there anymore. There's, yeah. like, nothing. Um, Wait, it was made of movie sets and Chinese people lived there, or it was made of movie sets to look like a Chinatown? It was made of movie sets... And I think it was made for the purpose of being a tourist destination. Right. I don't think it was somewhere where people were residing, but but I do think it was something that, like, like Chinese... I'm, I'm not totally sure. It was just a weird thing, and it was short-lived. It was weird, yeah. Yeah, and then um, what else did I find out? I found out a lot about, like, the 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 people who um, run the businesses around here, like um, KG Louie. I went over there, and I talked to Bill, and I was like, hey, I saw your picture in my book, because he was in my book, and then he, he was so... And then he's like, oh, I have that book, and he came, he, he got it out, and he was like, I was looking for his picture. He's like, page 61. So he, like, knows where his picture is, and it was really cute that's really cute um so uh so that was like a cool moment of connection because like other than that like i've never really talked to him sure um and then i just love history like i love finding out little things sure when you pass by them every day and then you find out how significant they are yeah um and i guess like it was interesting because, like, you know, we're ever aware, or we should be, of, like, gentrification and what that means. And, yes. like, me opening an art space makes me think, okay, how do I, like, acknowledge the community, be respectful to where I am? Right. And, like, I feel like a visitor because I feel like, like, the, like to me, like, the history of the place is very important. Um, and how do I do that? How do I do that in a respectful way but also do what I want to do or... Um, I don't know. So, uh, it's been important for me to retain, like, the history of where I am. Sure. And that's why I called it layman space. Um, so that I can be like, this is, you know, the name is very specific. That's layman way. Right. Um, yeah. Um, but. Well, I think that's really great. I think that's one of the least, uh. The least hipsterish things you can do, right? Oh, really? Thank you. Is really know what you're uh, doing <laughs> <laughs> and know the history of the of the of the place you're visiting or inhabiting or. Being yeah, part of. and like it, it's just so it's so important to me. Like I I have like a lot of gratitude that everyone here. I've had a great time. Like everyone oh, yeah. here everyone is here so is really nice. nice. Like like I don't know if you know Jody. She's the nicest ever. Definitely know Jody. Yeah. Um, she gave me a crystal to hang above my door to protect, um, to, to protect the space. Yes, yes. So, yeah. Well, uh, thank you so much for coming out on the show today. Totally my pleasure. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna look into the history of Chinatown more. I could give you the, I could loan you the book. I would love the book. Oh my god, I would absolutely love the book. Yeah, totally. 
Well, this has been uh, Let's Gay with Johnny Jungle Guts. Uh, keep tuned in to my YouTube channel. We upload new interviews twice a week. Thanks so much.